Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome you to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Joshi. This has got different lectures on different topic. We have got lectures for the specialist. We have got lectures for the students who are aspiring to be a good radiologist. So also we have got lectures for the technologists or medical imaging workers. Now this lecture essentially deals with a simplified version of a big lecture over the component of x-ray tube so let's have brief introduction of the component of tube in this lecture and if you want to have more details you can go back to our website or to our youtube channel now to start with are the disclaimers disclosures and acknowledgement most of the material which we have got here is from our departmental day-to-day -day teaching material However, there may be certain uh, illustrations which were downloaded from the web which are royalty free. We acknowledge with, uh, with thanks all of them for making their material available to us without any royalty. Now let's go to the X-ray tube, components of X-ray tube, different parts of it. We are going to have a brief idea that when you look at the tube, what are there inside. Now this is the usual a tube, X-ray tube you see to the X-ray machine. Now there are different type of tubes again, rotating anode, stationary anode, a large tube and all these things will be covered in different different topics in more and more detail. Here we are giving you just a brief idea what are there inside the X-ray tube and what is the basic physics behind it. Now here what we are seeing is aim of the tube or the function of the tube is to convert electric energy into x-ray energy now what it has got it has got a incoming electricity what it gives out it gives out a x-ray now almost 99 percent of incidental energy is converted into heat and only one percent of the incidental energy is converted into x-ray now this is the supply which is in three phase now we got heat and x-ray tubes now what are the components of x-ray tube here we are seeing are the housings what we see from outside then it has got a glass envelope or you can call this an insert it is a vacuum then it has got electrode it has got cathode that is a filament and a anode which is called as a target what are the tube housing it's the outer layer which you are seeing the main aim of the housing is to protect inside there are high voltage high voltages which are transferring from anode to cathode then there are excess getting produced now housing does two work one thing is it protects you number one and number two it allows x-ray to get out, uh, out in a specified area which can be collimated which can be restricted or which can be filtered so tube housing has a great role to play it's a shield against leakage of radiation it's the electrical insulator and also it is a heat protector like we told you 90 percent of the energy is converted into heat and only one percent is converted into x-ray now two housings are filled with the oil this is the tube housing where you are seeing there is a oil now there is a role for this oil it dissipates the heat so whatever heat is produced it dissipates it so it helps to cool the tube number two electrical energy insulation it can give and below the end of tube there is oil to expand when it heated now what is there in glass insert this is a glass insert what we can say now it anode can be stationary anode rotating anode filaments again it is of different capacity there can be one filament there can be two filament this can be small filament large filament they have a different role there are different applications and they are extensively covered definitely when we will come to filament now these filaments are similar to that of a electrical or light bulb which uses a light they glow when heated and routinely they produce light and in x-ray tube they produce x-rays now the material usually used is a tungsten because of its high melting point there is a big heat so it should not melt now this is a cathode a filament what you are seeing here now the main role is to supply the electrons when it is heated it boils off the electrons and they are available for the x-ray production now this is a coil of tungsten wire similar to that of an electrical bulb and cathode is a source of electrons by means of thermionic emission that we are going to see in uh, some different lectures so the filament is heated by electric apl uh, current application when it boils off it releases electrons which are then converted into the photons that is the x-ray energy now we are continuing with the x-ray uh, x tube then uh, what are the supportive things for the x-ray tube what are other things that are there in the x-ray machine now the x-rays are produced by two distinct process one is called characteristic radiation and the second is called Bremsstrahlung. now this word is a German word 
which means to desolate or to stop suddenly. Now this thing will be uh, seeing more in detail in extra production. Then output beam spectrum is important. It gives you here, which is a characteristic radiation, which is useful. Now output photon beam consisting of characteristic radiation, then characteristic of the target material and third is several discrete energies. Bremster lung is a continuous range of energies. They range from zero to few kbs and therefore they do not make any diagnostic impact and most of the photons have low energy and they make no part in the imaging process. Despite fraction of beam at each energy produces the x-ray, water it produces is extremely essential and we have to make use of that. Now what is the tube current? Tube current is a rate of electron flow from filament to the target. Now electron per second measured in milliamperes are the MA. It is not the same as that of the filament current. It is different. Now exposure parameters. What we are seeing are the KV. Now diagnostic range is from 40 to 120. Usually it is in between 60 to 80. That is the maximum used KVs. Now second is the MA. Now, the role of MA, these are the rate of electron flow from cathode to anode during the exposure. So by increasing the MA, you increase the something like a number of uh, X-rays or electrons. Now time is the duration in which the exposure is on. So these are the three basics KV, MA and timing. MA is a product of MA into second which is almost constant for any radiographic part. Here what we got liberty is to increase MA when we want to reduce the time. Short exposure timing uses a movement free or artifact free image. Now beam intensity is a product of photon in the beam, photon energy spectrum. The unit for it is Rontgen per unit time and measurement of ionization is there. Now depend on KV, MA, target, material and filtration, beam intensity is formed. Now beam intensity is proportional to MA. Beam intensity is proportional to KVP square. Here we are seeing high voltage is applied and we have got a filament which relates the electron then they are accelerated then x-rays are produced now what is the focal spot focal spot is a size that affects and limits the resolution then portion of anode struck by the electron is also called as a focal spot so larger is a focal spot there will be blurring of the image and shorter or smaller is a focal it will give a very sharp image most of the tubes have two filaments and thus two focal spot a small and a large a small focal gives a sharp image but cannot take high MA but the large focus can take high MA, take more seconds but it can give a less sharp image and only one at a time is exposed either short or large. You cannot use both at a time and you can change the resolution. You can when you, are, you know, want a good resolution you can go for the small focus but here you will have to give more MA, more seconds because more MA cannot be used. Large focus use more MA, you can give more seconds but it is less sharp. Now what is the focal spot size and resolution correlation? Larger the focal spot, the more it will be blur and a tiny one will not blur much. So if you want to have a sharp image, you cannot have a larger focal spot. These are the two focal spot. You are seeing the how it changes the sharpness. Now larger focal spot, better heat ratings, you can give more exposures, electron beam applies huge amount of heat to the target which can be dissipated easily if it has got a cooling mechanism. So all these things are important when you are doing radiography at high, at high KV. Now larger focal spot is the better heat rating. So you can have, you can afford to have more exposures and you can afford to have better dissipation of heat if the focal spot is larger. Now target angle, the angle between target and perpendicular to the tube axis is called as target angle. Typically it is 7 to 15 degrees. It's role is to focus the x-rays. Here you are seeing the beams are target. First the flow of electron is targeted from cathode to anode. Now anode converts it into the x-ray photon, x-ray energy. So here if you want to have in particular direction x-rays, the angle is essential which is in between 7 to 15 degrees in different machine and different manufacturer. Now what is the line focus principle? It is the actual or two focal spot as seen from the filament and apparent or effective or 
or projected focus spot as seen from the two port or the patient. Now target angle is usually 7 to 12 degrees. Continuing target angle, a larger the target angle, poorer will be heat rating, then better field coverage and smaller will optimize the heat rating and limits field to be covered. Diagrammatically it is shown so that you can understand it better. Now heel effect. What is the heel effect? The intensity of X-ray beam significantly reduced on an anode side. The diagram you can get it. Beam goes through more target material exciting anode on anode side. Now anodes are stationary anode and rotating anode. Stationary anode are used in dental tubes and rotating anode are used in our routine radiographic tubes, X-ray departmental tubes. Now in rotating it is refers to the anode. Rotating anode tube a target is annular track then it spreads heat over a larger area. You can have better tube ratings. You can have more successive exposure. You can have more MA. Now third is the speed. It is in between 3600 to 9600 RPM. Now anode rotates with that speed that is for the heat dissipation. Again we have got different lecture covering these topics extensively. Now rotating anode tube advantages are better heat rating. The disadvantages are it is more complex. Then it has got more complicated circuits. Then motor winding housings, bearings, etc. That makes tube a clumsy one. It is a large tube. It is a it has got more moving parts and it has got a heavy design. Now rotating anode, the larger diameter, better heat effect, heavier and also it is a costly. The material is usually tungsten. We have given you a brief idea about how a X-ray tube is, what are the things in between. We request you to go to our website, find out each and every minute topic out of it. Maybe anode, maybe a cathode, maybe a filament. There are different lecture designs. The lectures are there available and make use of it. With that, I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Please visit our website for comprehensive detail. Take care, do more studies, know more physics and do best to the patient. Thank you, goodbye and take care.